What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today I want to talk to you guys about toilet paper in prison. I know that probably seems like a pretty crazy topic to be making a video about, but with the current state of affairs and things going on in the world and the toilet paper shortages that we seem to be dealing with at grocery stores all over the place, restaurants, bars, and fast food establishments are closing their in-dining facilities. And you might think that that's because of the fact that we do have this virus spreading that they're trying to get under control, but personally, I think it's so you can't steal their toilet paper. I wanted to make that sort of like a little joke right there. Probably didn't do very well at all. Again, you might think this is a pretty crazy topic to be talking about, and in this video, what we're gonna be addressing is the importance of toilet paper in prison, some things that you probably never even imagined in relation to this papery substance that's used to clean between the Junes, and also what exactly toilet paper could be used for, alternative uses for toilet paper while serving time. And I think also with this video, you guys might see some similarities between things that we're dealing with out here in the free world and things that take place up in prison. So without further ado, what do you say we go ahead and we do? Fall. I didn't really have nothing going on to head first into this toilet paper treat of a video. Folks, there's a lot of things to mention in relation to toilet paper in prison that you probably had no idea about. One such thing to start this video off is did you know that while serving time, toilet paper is only handed out about once a week. And notice how I say about, because there are certain times when just like out here in the free world at your local grocery stores, even in prison, folks, they deal with toilet paper shortages. You might go two, maybe even three weeks without getting your re-up on a fresh roll. And sometimes that toilet paper is gonna be passed out by staff, maybe a guard, and other times it could be passed out by some sort of a trustee or other prisoner worker. And if that toilet paper is being passed out by a prisoner, you're gonna to wanna to make damn good and sure that you're right there at your bunk area or your cell when they're passing out that toilet paper because just like everything else in prison, certain prisoners could act funny about those rolls of toilet paper and there's a good possibility that if you're not there, you might not get you a roll. Or even worse, somebody might actually steal that fresh roll of toilet paper right off of your bunk or out of your cell. Could you imagine being locked up and having to fight a guy because he stole toilet paper from you? When I tell you the dudes will fight in prison behind anything, they will even fight in prison behind stealing a roll of toilet paper. Trust me, it can happen. Now another thing that could lead to you possibly having to go weeks without getting a new roll of toilet paper is if you end up getting locked down. If you're on lockdown or you're under some sort of a quarantine, that can definitely pose a risk to them not passing out that poop paper. Can we call it that? Sounds kind of cringe. But no matter what the circumstance might be, if you have to go weeks, let's say two or three weeks with one single roll of toilet paper, do you think that you can make that single roll of toilet paper last you two or three weeks? I don't know about you guys out there, but I poop at least four times a day. And this ain't just like using the bathroom out here in the free world. In prison, you gotta go up and beyond with that toilet paper just to be able to use the bathroom. A lot of guys are gonna take that toilet paper and lace up that silver bullet, AKA that steel commode that you're gonna be resting your junes on as some sort of a form of protection, maybe something a little warmer than that cold steel. Some guys like our good friend Gay Dave might use the shower shoes as a form of a butt flap, some kind of a cushion for them to be able to sit down on and that's a really good thing considering. Think how much extra toilet paper you're gonna use if you gotta lace up that toilet with that same toilet paper as well. So mentioning the fact that toilet paper is usually passed out once a week but you could go two, possibly three weeks without getting the re-up due to certain things that could take place while serving time, learning to ration what you have is absolutely of the utmost importance. Folks, have you ever tried to clean yourself with one single sheet of single ply? You better learn to fold that square up like it's origami. Now, at certain facilities, and if you have the means to be able to do so, and we're talking a little bit of extra means because very few prisoners are gonna do this, but at certain facilities, and if you got the money to be able to do so, you can also purchase, like Charmin, off of commissary. And I can't remember how much that stuff costs. I wanna say it's something like a dollar, maybe more a roll, could be a little bit less, maybe like 90 cents. And it's purchasing toilet paper off of commissary that guarantees you 
that you're going to be getting a better quality toilet paper than that state-issued toilet paper that you're going to get. It's like wiping your jeans with a piece of sandpaper. It's some rough stuff, though, and it's only single plot. And it's bringing up the fact that you can purchase toilet paper off of commissary that reminds me of a couple of things. One, I very rarely ever saw dudes purchasing toilet paper from commissary unless they absolutely needed it and we were in some sort of a drought in terms of getting that state-issued toilet paper passed out. If you see a guy who's purchasing toilet paper off of commissary and we're getting the state-issued toilet paper on a regular basis, you're going to look at that guy and think that he must think that he's fancy or something. He probably plays golf or tennis out here in the real world. Might also have graduated from Harvard or Yale. Who buys toilet paper off the commissary? Oh, you got those type of charges? Oh, you're going to need to do a lot of wiping. I just recently did a video called the five worst commissary items you know, sold in prisons and toilet paper was almost one that made it. If I ever did a follow-up video to that, I would definitely include that item because toilet paper is not something that you're ever going to buy unless you absolutely need to, or unless you went to some fancy Ivy League school and somehow ended up in prison. Because that's what other prisoners gonna look at you like. Damn, you buying toilet paper though? Who you think you is? You could have spent that dollar on three ramen noodle soups or a bar of soap. And just to go a little bit further with toilet paper that can be purchased off of commissary. You know, toilet paper in prison, it's a hot commodity. It's a given, everybody needs it, but it's, virtually worthless. It doesn't matter what they're selling it for on commissary. You can't do nothing with that toilet paper except actually use that. You can't gamble with it. You can't pay no debts with it. You can't make a trade with it in most cases. Maybe there are certain places and certain people who might accept that, but I'm going to tell you right now, the chances of that are going to be slim to none. Now, Let's go back to the whole toilet paper shortage because we're currently dealing with that right now. And just like we're dealing with the toilet paper shortage out here, you're also seeing people who are stockpiling toilet paper. Like, are you going to eat that when the world really does come to a shutdown and you need some food? Are you going to try to trade that? I saw a meme where a dude was in a strip club giving the chick sheets of toilet paper. It was pretty damn funny. But just like out here in the real world, how people are stockpiling toilet paper, you are going to have certain state-struck prisoners. Dudes who hoard and collect everything. Hey, you going home? What'd you do with that quarter roll of toilet paper? You, I, I saw you with it last night. Let me get that. You're going to have dudes in prison who stockpile rolls of state-issued institutional toilet paper in either Lisa or Bob Barker bars of state soap. So... This is one of those cases where everything that I was just talking about, how toilet paper is a hot commodity, but it's virtually worthless. Well, this is one particular case when it's definitely going to have some value. Because if you ain't got no toilet paper or your toilet paper got stolen or they're not passing out toilet paper or for whatever reason, you just ain't got none. If you're locked up, there is always that one guy who's got a locker full of rolls of toilet paper and state-issued bars of soap. And there ain't no worser feeling than having to go to this dude and take him a couple of soups for a roll of toilet paper. It's almost like doing the walk of shame. You're gonna leave from that situation mad. You're gonna feel like you got taken advantage of. Them soups are important. I had to give you three ramen noodle soups for a roll of something that they give us for free. You're gonna be walking away from that situation with the bitter beer face, but on the inside, you're gonna know, well, at least you can use the bathroom now. You got you a fresh roll. And you know, something else really crazy about those state-struck individuals who doomsday prepper prepare, you know, for the end of the world with stockpiles of toilet paper and soap. Again, this is something that they give away. But yet, let a shakedown or a cell inspection or, or a locker search take place, and you get caught with a locker full of toilet paper and soap, especially the free kind that they're giving away, you're going to get a charge for that. That's a contraband charge. They're going to think that you were stealing the toilet paper and the soap. I have actually seen that happen. Dude got a damn institutional charge, possession of contraband, for something that they give away. And I'm not necessarily sure if he ever beat that charge or not. You know, when you get an institutional charge, you've got an inmate advisor, a.k.a. your little jailhouse lawyer. And it's oftentimes hard to beat charges while locked up. I'm not going to say it's impossible. You know, it's going to be your word versus theirs. In terms of what they think actually happened and how you went about acquiring a locker full of toilet paper. Now, something else to mention about toilet paper in prison, and this is not your state-issued institutional toilet paper. Doesn't that just sound like 
the worst type of toilet paper to be using. And I've had this roll of toilet paper sitting beside me the entire time doing this video, and this is the first time that I'm, I'm breaking it out, so forgive me for that. But I wanted to use this as an example. Let's just say this is that prison issue toilet paper. One thing that you might not know about this, if it was in fact that, was when they hand you that single roll, usually it's got a wrapper on it. And that wrapper in prison is sometimes, well, here in the state of Virginia, it's referred to as blue steel. That's what they call the paper wrapper around the toilet paper. And what may seem like something you might just tear off of the toilet paper and disregard because your stomach is bubbling and you gotta hit that commode is actually just as hot of a commodity as the item that it's wrapping up. Because what prisoners will do with that blue steel is they'll actually tear that up and use that to roll up little pinner prison roll-ups. You can actually smoke out of that blue steel paper wrapper that's used to wrap up the toilet paper. And to be honest with you, I think it's probably one of the better types of paper to use if you are gonna smoke while locked up. Even though it's got like blue ink on it or green ink or something like that and smoking that ink, I, that can't be good for you. But you know, think about what prisoners are gonna use to roll up anything in prison. You can use that wrapper from the toilet paper, or you can use like pages out of a Bible. And I don't know about you guys, but I'll go ahead and admit it. I've smoked using Bible paper before. And I always hate doing that. Like, I, I don't like that at all. Have you ever smoked that of like some Bible paper and as you're smoking, just feeling like you're going straight to hell? I can't be the only one who's ever felt like that. Now also, go ahead and mention that, you know, sometimes when they pass out the toilet paper, they're gonna take that wrapper off of the toilet paper because, you know, they're not dumb. They know that prisoners use that to roll up either tobacco or the devil's lettuce or whatever it may be. But a lot of times they don't even, they don't, they don't mess with it. They just leave it right up on there. And get caught with that wrapper in your locker if you want to. That's a contraband charge. How are they gonna give you something and they expect you to throw it away? That's what they do. You're supposed to throw that away. But moving on, you know, nothing really says prison like getting up off of that steel commode out of that restroom area and then going back to your bunk area after you haven't washed your hands at all, and about five or 10 or maybe 15 minutes later, you remember, oh damn, I forgot my toilet paper in the bathroom. And then you go back up into that bathroom area only to see that your car has been stolen. Toilet paper is gone. And nobody's in the bathroom or there are people in the bathroom and ain't nobody paying you no mind. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. You know, you will see dudes who'll come up out of that bathroom area and try to make a scene. If I find out you took my toilet paper, whoever you are, you ain't got no soups in your lock. I know you ain't got none. And I know you won't stand up right now and tell me you took it. Hey, I took your toilet paper. Oh, well, well, excuse me. Uh, you can have it. But if it was anybody else, if it was anybody else, don't let me find out you took, I swear to God, I'm gonna write a kite. I'm gonna tell on you. There ain't a lot that you can do in that situation. And toilet paper, like use bars of soap, like use tubes of toothpaste, none of that stuff is safe being left up in the bathroom or shower area unattended. It will get stolen. Even something as trivial as a damn roll of toilet paper. And nothing says prison going even further, like having to write your damn name on everything. Your socks, your boxers, your t-shirts, even your damn roll of toilet paper. I've had to do it. I've seen dudes who have done it. You really know where you're at when you got a freaking mark so you know it can't get stolen. Toilet paper. I wanna move on now to the second part of this video. I'm gonna make this really short. I wanna go through this pretty quickly and talk about other alternative uses for poop paper up inside of a prison. And just like anything else, even a ramen soup wrapper, everything in prison, the wrapper to a roll of toilet paper like we talked about earlier, everything in prison has alternate and alternative and oftentimes many different uses, including the TP. And think about it, you know, what What else could you use toilet paper for? Out here in the free world, what else do you use it for? Maybe you use it as a paper towel, uh, a napkin. Well, in prison, toilet paper can be used as a form of arts and crafts. Maybe you want to send something exquisite, interesting, definitely unique to your, your girlfriend, your prison pen pal, maybe to Jody. Hey, Jody, thank you for holding it down with my girl out there. You've been keeping her on track. She's been sending money every week. 
But one alternative use for toilet paper in prison, it can be used to make paper roses. In fact, the last time I remember somebody making a paper rose, it was out of a napkin, it wasn't out of toilet paper, and it was out of Buffalo Wild Wings. It was like this old drunk dude walking around trying to make paper, he was charging $20 to see that magic, he called it a magic trick too. My dumb ass gave him that 20 as well. But prisoners could make paper roses out of toilet paper. They could also wet that toilet paper, mush it up together, form it into the shape that they need it to be, let it dry out, and then mark those shapes, those hardened shapes, and they can actually make dice out of toilet paper as well. Now these are definitely not gonna be your standard weighted dice by any stretch of the imagination. Sometimes they're not even gonna be straight, they're gonna be crooked dice. And there ain't nothing like gambling your hard-earned loved one's money that they are sending to you out of the kindness of their heart that you spent on all sorts of vending machine food. Just to gamble that away using some crooked toilet paper dice. Playing some craps or some CeeLo. Another use for toilet paper, well, not necessarily the toilet paper, but actually the cardboard tube inside of the toilet paper. And we actually did a video about this a long time ago, but you can take that cardboard tube and you can cut it and you can make a speaker box out of it. Now it's not the greatest speaker box in the world, but it will offer you a means to be able to hear your music just a little bit louder. You can also take that cardboard tube, put a bottom to it, glue it to the door in your locker with either, you know, some toothpaste to add some glue or maybe some tape from some deodorants and use it as a pen or a pencil holder. You can roll up the toilet paper and hell, I still do this out here in the real world and make Q-tips out of it. You can buy Q-tips off of commissary. I think they were like $1.90, maybe more a bag or a pack. But I would just twist that toilet paper up real tight and then put that in my ear all the way to my brain and use that as a Q-tip instead. And speaking of ears, another use for toilet paper is you can ball it up, wrap it up like a little dope baggie inside of some saran wrap that you might get from a bag lunch on a holiday for dinner. Nothing is more depressing in prison than eating a bag lunch for dinner on a holiday and then not having no contact with your loved ones at all if you even have any loved ones. You're gonna be Mr. Lonely for real. Eating a sweat meat bologna sandwich on Christmas night. Sorry, that brings back a lot of bad memories. But earplugs. Earplugs are an absolute survival tool uh, something you gotta have in prison. A lot of prisoners feel conflicted about earplugs. Some dudes can sleep straight through the chaos, but will hear a prisoner approaching for a potential attack. And that's why some prisoners don't want to use earplugs because they feel like, you know, they can't hear somebody creeping up on them. Me personally, I use the earplugs because I can't stand listening to the chaos 24-7. And you know, sometimes they even sold real earplugs on commissary in prison, but you know, I, I felt like the ones that I could make out of the toilet paper were just as good. Another use for toilet paper in prison, we've done this here on After Prison Show, and I did this quite a bit while I was locked up, but you twist that toilet paper up sort of like you're making a Q-tip, you put that in a sawed off soda can with some hair grease inside of it, and boom, you got you a wick to a candle, where you can then cover that up to burn soot to make tattoo ink. And speaking of toilet paper being used in the commission of creating fire, in prison. A toilet paper is actually one important thing that you need while making a prison lighter. And we've also done that here on After Prison Show as well. I just definitely don't recommend anybody trying that out here because I can remember the first time that I did that on a video. I was at one of my older apartments and I knocked out the power to the entire apartment. Blew the whole breaker box. So those are just a few examples of alternative uses for toilet paper in prison. And I think I went pretty thorough with you know, the importance and just a lot of things in relation to that papery substance while serving time. And folks, if I forgot about anything or there's anything that you would like to incorporate and include and mention in relation to this video, please leave a like and a comment on this video and let me know just that and also what you thought about this. Folks, I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave that like and a comment. And as always, until next time, enjoy life the free world. Never take a moment for granted. I was gonna mention something about toilet paper right there as well, like stop stockpiling the TP and make the most of every day. Peace!